Okay, so I have the sound effects in place, or at least most of them. And the next thing that we're gonna talk about is voiceover. In the previous video, I made a big deal about making sure you got a plan and make sure you got your script and use that script to help uh, dictate what the interactions between the, the characters is gonna be when you're doing your filming. And if you did those things, you'll definitely find yourself ahead of the game. The, the better you can do with that, the better off you're going to be in editing. But inevitably, you're going to find yourself in a situation where you have either too much or too little footage in certain places, and you need to cut some things out or add some things in. It's different with live action because most of the time your characters are reciting the lines, and even if you're doing voiceover, if you're not using the, the audio that you recorded when you recorded the, the scene, you'll be voiceover the same lines, and so it will already be, the timing will already be correct. Now, I've thought about this a lot. It's it's a it's a hard thing to do. It's a big problem. Well, it's not a big problem, but it's a it's a hard thing to manage. And I've thought about recording all of the audio ahead of time and and then using that audio while you're making the 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 animation to to really get the timing right cuz it's one thing to to kind of recite the script while you're doing the filming and say, okay, I need about three seconds here while he says this and then they have some interaction. But if you had the actual entire dialogue sequenced and you could hear it while you were filming that would actually help a little bit but it's a lot of work it also it doesn't account for the fact that a lot of times when you do your animation you come up with little interactions that are kind of cool and you might add some dialogue for that or you might change the script later because you have you know a new idea or something like that so what we were going to talk about today is you've shot your your your, your footage first and you're going to do the voiceover next and you want to either add or remove parts of the of the animation to lengthen or shorten them so we're going to talk about that right now okay so here we are again i've got all of my voiceover uh, clips imported and i just wanted to, to quickly mention that i just used audacity in windows you can just use audacity to record or whatever software you're comfortable with audacity is what i've shown earlier you can record directly onto the pc if you've got any sort of a mic that would allow you to do that that's probably the easiest way then you can use audacity to do the noise reduction like we talked about previously and really just get your clips ready it's not much different than the stuff we talked about with sound effects really you just want to get the voiceover recorded and into the PC and then you can do the noise reduction or whatever you could use an iPhone and record the voiceover with uh, with GarageBand like we talked about or just with a with a voice recorder on any any smartphone whatever you do you want to get those those clips in and sequenced or I mean in and edited processed through audacity and you're happy with how they sound then drag them in just like we do any of the other media and you'll have your clips ready to go in here so I have those ready and we're gonna go ahead and try to, to voice over this first section of them coming together and greeting each other. So I'm going to start it with Bob or Fred or whatever. I can't remember which guy, the guy on the right side, as he kind of comes into the screen, I'll have that be the beginning of the, 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 the greeting. So he's going to say something like, what does he say? Hey, Bob, good to see you or something like that. And that's right here. So I'm going to grab this, drag it down and I'm gonna go ahead and turn, well, snapping is on, so we should be able to bring that to the line. There we go. So we've got that right there. So let's just listen to where we got. Hey, Bob, good of you to stop by. I can't wait to show you my new painting. I think it really completes the room. Okay, so that's fine. Sounds good so far. That kind of seemed like a natural interaction. And then we're gonna have Bob respond and he's gonna say, I wouldn't miss it. So let's see, I wouldn't miss it. We'll grab this and we'll just put it on the end there. We'll snap it right to it and see what that sounds like. I can't wait to show you my new painting. I think it really completes the room. I wouldn't miss it. Is it really a Jackson Rockwell original? Okay, so we obviously have a problem. He has entered the house and it's it's we have something else we want to add and we kind of missed it there. And the, the thing we want to add is after you. So he's going to say after you to let him go in the in the door. And obviously that needs to happen somewhere around... Let's take a look here. That should happen probably right here as he starts to make the motion after you. So we need to fill enough space to get this stuff kind of sequenced up and give ourselves some padding. So what we need to do is figure out what would we like to use as a filler clip here. Is it really a Jackson? Okay, so let's see if we can find the spot that we would like to use for some filler. So 
it would maybe the handshake we could we could have the handshake pause a little longer here but that might be awkward i'm gonna go ahead and mute this voiceover because it's kind of loud while we're talking um but that oh, right there that seems like a good one when he comes down and they're still right there there's two frames and again that's really one frame in our animation but because we told it that this is a, a 12 it's a 24 frame per second project and it's a 12 frame per second clip it's going to add basically an, an extra frame on every single one it's just going to double all the frames so we've basically got two frames of him standing there in that one position so it's right there to there you can see i'm using the left and right arrows that's the same frame so we're just going to copy out that one that those two frames and we're going to loop them so that they just looks like they're standing there talking to each other and that'll add that'll give us some buffer okay so this is something I'm gonna spend a little bit more time on because this is where you can really start messing yourself up. There's a few things we gotta keep in mind. So we talked earlier about locking tracks so that when you insert things that you don't push out other things you don't wanna push out or you know you keep things organized and you do push out things you want to. So in our, in our SE1 and SE2 tracks in our special effects or sound effect one and sound effect two tracks, we have things lined up and sequenced the way that we want them and we don't want any of that to change downstream but our ambient tracks we do want to keep exactly where they are where they are we we want that to not to push out when we add stuff in because we don't want to have gaps the same thing is true of our voiceover track we just added it and later we might want it to push out but right now we know we want those things to be in that order so we don't want those to get cut and push out so i'm going to go ahead and lock any tracks we don't want to move which is our ambient tracks and our voiceover we want our sound effect one and two tracks to move we want main audio to move even though we don't have anything downstream on main audio we would want it to move if we did okay so we have those tracks locked and all we're going to do is we're going to take this tool right here this is the um, blade edit tool you can press b or you can select that tool and we're going to i'm going to use alt mouse wheel and zoom in just a little bit make sure i got the right starting frame i do so i'm going to click right there and that's going to cut this into two clips now then i'm going to right mouse or sorry right arrow once to get to that next frame and i'm going to cut again and that gives us this little teeny clip in the middle which is just those two frames now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back to the arrow i'm going to click on this i'm going to control c to uh, to copy it and then we can either go up here and say edit paste insert or we can do control shift v i'm going to do control shift v and you can see what happened is it inserted that clip and it pushed it downstream if we did just control v it would insert the clip but it would overwrite a little bit of the next clip so i'm going to undo that control z and do control shift v again and i can do that a few times you can see that every time i do that let me zoom out a little bit just to give a slightly better picture here if i go back here control shift v you can see that it's pushing everything out on that track but it's not pushing these other tracks out at all so let's go down here and we can start to get an idea of how much we need to do to get where we want to get so if we just keep doing that we know that's going to take a lot so let's instead of doing that let's zoom in a little bit again and let's select all of these you can click on one and then shift click on the other whoops that didn't work click shift click now we can copy that Control shift v again and we can add in bigger chunks at a time so i'm going to zoom out again Control shift v all right so i don't know how much we're going to need here but let's just take a look at what we've got so far oh so i got this muted do it one more time oh. i wouldn't miss it was it really a jackson rockwell original after you all right so actually i'm missing a piece here we're gonna have to add quite a bit more than i thought because he responds with sure is and where is that right sh that sure does let's see i paid a pretty yep that's the one okay so i'm going to unlock this layer move this out again i'm spending a little more time here than i would spend on some of this stuff because i want you to see i think this is important to to know how to manage all this stuff it's it can get out of control pretty easy uh, you can see we're gonna have to actually add quite a bit in here right to make this all fit so that was it really a jackson rockwell original all right so what we could also do now we have we know we need to add a little bit more because we're still 
that far away from where he needs to say after you he's it sure is i paid a pretty penny for it too so we need to to accommodate that as well so instead of copying the same piece over again i'm sorry about that instead of copying exactly the same stuff let's find another little part that we could loop so we have this little animation where they kind of lean towards each other and make a make a, a little motion we could copy that out and we, we could use that once or twice with some of the other dead scenes in between it because they come back to more or less the same spot. So let's see, we, we know that right here at the beginning of this, right after we've done this pasting, that would be a good place to start. And we already have a cut there. So let's go all the way to the end of what animation we might want to loop because we're going to get a fair amount out of this. So before right there, before he starts making the motion to uh, invite him in, we'll go ahead and do another cut here. And then we're gonna copy this frame here, or this clip. So Control C, now if we Control Shift V, we're getting quite a bit out of that when it's a lot longer. But you can see that I forgot to lock this layer, and so it just split that clip. So I'm gonna Control Z, and I'm gonna lock this layer, Control Shift V again, and now we're pushing out the right things and we're leaving the right things. And let's just see what that looks like. So they kind of bow towards each other and then bow again. And that's okay, but what we might wanna do is have some of these uh, these clips in between so that it's just not them bowing back and forth. So now we've got a couple of things that we can work with to give us some variation in our looping. So let's go in here and grab, I don't know, a few of these. So let's grab there to there maybe, Control C. And then they do one bowing and then we'll Control Shift V to paste in that set. And let's just take a look at what that looks like. So they're staring, they bow, they go back up, they talk a little bit more. That's not bad. I mean, if you do that too many times, you're going to start to see a, a repetition. But you guys get the idea. We can we can lengthen the scenes by finding clips that are okay for us to loop and then putting them in and kind of randomizing a little bit. So it's important to add some variation. Like you wouldn't want to add just the same amount of time here between the next set because you want it to maybe a little shorter. So you don't want people to start to see patterns in your looping, but you can get away with quite a bit here. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this up and then I'll come back and show you what I've got. Okay. So I added a couple more loops in here to try to get things lined up and i just had something uh come up that i wanted to show you before we move on here so it, it's a lot closer let me show you where we're at so well originally it sure is i paid a pretty penny for it too after you okay so it's pretty close and we could probably live with that but i want the after you i don't want to add any more loops and we have a little bit of dead space i want to get rid of a little bit of the the dead uh air here on some of these clips so i'm gonna go right here and you can see that we kind of if we stop it right there there's no audio from there to the end of this clip and that'll help me to kind of bring this more where i want it to be so i'm gonna go ahead and use the the blade edit and i'm gonna clip that out. Now I want to point out, I don't know if I said this before, but there's a big difference between using the delete key and the backspace key. What happens when you use the delete key? Let me show you this. So if I use the delete key right now, it just cut out this part and it also cut out the part up here on this clip, which is not what we wanted to have happen. So I'm going to control Z. You can see that I cut out everything that wasn't locked actually ended up getting cut out. Now, in this particular case, I would just like to get rid of this piece. And if I use the backspace key, it'll just delete it out and leave everything else in place. Now, sometimes it would be desirable for this all to like scrunch down because you might have a bunch of stuff downstream. If you wanted to do that, of course, you would just lock any of these layers, basically lock every other layer. And if we do that, if we lock the rest of the layers and then we select this and put delete, then it will go ahead and shrink everything else down. But a lot of times, again, you have things sequenced downstream from this in your voiceover track and you don't want most of them to change, right? So I'm going to go ahead and, and unlock my video layer and my main audio and my two sound effect layers and we'll do the same thing again. So if I control, let's see, do I need to control? Yeah, I need to control Z all the way back to there. Now I'll unlock these layers and show that if we click here, and we backspace now it left everything in place and if we just wanted this clip to come closer we could do that and then let's just see where we're at paid a pretty penny for it too after you okay so that's closer i can live with that now a couple of things that you'll notice here as well is that we've got differences in the sound levels you can see them right away you can see the the 
the waveform here shows a lot higher peak decibel than it does for these. Now we can do one of two things. We could either lower the 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 fred parts to match the bob parts, or we could raise the bob parts a little bit, and we could kind of meet in the middle somewhere. A lot of times I'll just kind of pick which one sounds right to me at first, and I could have also done some normalization in Audacity, which you can go look into that later. Normalizing just allows you to say, I want to normalize at X decibels, and every everything that you normalize will just get amplified to that so that they all end up being the same. It's actually a pretty smart thing to do. A lot of times I forget to do it, which is the case here. So. Um, you can you can make the adjustments in in resolve as well but let's go ahead and just listen real quickly to the these two together and see which one we like it sure is i paid a pretty penny for it too so being that we're outside and we have some ambient noise i feel like the fred part is a little loud so we're going to bring that down and you can actually see the waveform change as you do this so if we just drag this down see how you can kind of almost match up the waveform just by visually matching it so we just brought it down i don't know negative 3.75 let's bring this one up just a little bit kind of get them a little closer maybe bring this one down just a hair more negative let's see 7.5 and let's see what that does for us it sure is i paid a pretty penny for it too so that's pretty close i'm going to go ahead and do the rest of them and then i'll sequence in all of the rest of the voiceover audio and then we'll come back and we'll talk about the next section Okay, so I finally got all of the voiceover clips sequenced and lined up, and as you can see, I had to do quite a few shenanigans just to get things working the way that we wanted them. So there's a bunch of looping here, there's a bunch of dead space. What really happened is at the very end of this movie, it caught me in a place where I had a lot of dialogue and I just hadn't allowed for enough animation uh, to loop and and fill that dead space and it it would have been not so bad if I had just a couple of little animations like a couple of little interactions where they would turn towards each other and then turn back and that's one thing I usually try to do is just add a couple of filler animations when I know like okay right around here I'm probably gonna have to to wiggle the the animation and get something out of it and loop stuff but I only gave myself like one frame between this kind of last section and where he drops the glass and so I ended up having to do a bunch of just crazy stuff so I have some some really just dead space here and I'll show in a minute what the whole thing looks like but I was able to get it all lined up in sequence so I've added probably a good 30 seconds total over the course of the movie and most of it was places where I could find good things to 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 loop and and things kind of seem natural but right here at the end it's it's a little off and all I really would have needed is just a a couple of frames or a couple of seconds worth maybe um i don't know 12 or or 24 frames of a good cup a good animation where they just have some little interactions that i could loop and then put some dead space in so that's just something to keep in mind again the more attention you paid while you're doing the shooting to those little things the better off you'll be at the end but we do have it sequenced and all of the audio is in there. I won't show you everything until the end. I'm going to play through the whole thing so you can see the timeline with the movie playing at the at the end of this tutorial. But uh, we got to go through one more thing now, which is adding title sequence and credits. And I'll show you how to animate titles and credits and kind of get things wrapped up. And, and we'll even throw some music on the beginning for our title. And then we'll talk a little bit about transitions between the scenes. And we'll be ready to wrap up and export our movie and get it ready to deliver. So we'll move on to that now.